Great. Welcome, everyone, to the last um, edition of the BEAM Learning Month. This, be, this meetup is being recorded, and in this edition, we will be hearing using Java transforms in a multi-language um, Python pipeline presented by Chimakara. And before we begin, I would like to cover some housekeeping items. You can access the meeting agenda with this link um, that will be posted in the chat. We will hear from our presenters, and then you will have time for Q&A. Please use, use the reaction button in Zoom to raise your hand so we can take you off mute. We encourage you to interact with um, CHAM as well as each other in the chat. And during the Q&A, you will be able to ask your questions by raising the hand with the raise the hand feature. And we will let you ask your question by coming off mute. Otherwise, you can ask questions in the chat and we will read those out loud at the end of the talk. You can learn more about the Apache Beam project by joining our Slack channel and by visiting the website. We will place both of these links in the chat. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Chamakara, a software engineer at Google. Hi, welcome everybody. Um, so today, today the talk will be uh, on using Java transforms in multi-language Python pipelines. So my name is Chamakara. Uh, I work at Google. Also, I am a committer and a PMC member for Apache Beam project. Okay, so let's start with a uh, small introduction to Apache Beam. So Apache Beam gives you a unified programming model for batch and stream uh, streaming pipelines. Uh, Apache Beam supports multiple runners like Google Cloud Dataflow, Apache Flink, and Apache Spark. We have three major SDKs, Java, Python, and Go. Okay, so uh, an Apache illustration of an Apache model, uh, Apache Beam pipeline would look like this. So uh, a user would use a Beam SDK to define a pipeline. And that pipeline would be uh, converted to a standard uh, definition uh, through uh, what we call the Beam Runner API, which basically produces a proto definition of a, a pipeline that is uh, independent of the uh, SDK. And then this uh, pipeline would be submitted to a Beam runner, like Dataflow or Flink. <clears throat> and the runner would use another API called the Beam uh, Fun API to connect to an execution environment to actually, actually, actually execute the parts of the uh, pipeline. Okay, so at high level, uh, a Beam pipeline is a cyclic acyclic graph of P collections and P transforms. Uh, P collections form nodes of the graph and P transforms form edges of this graph. Uh, a P collection basically represents a data set that's available somewhere. It could be you know, in your local machine or it could be in some distributed storage. A P transform represents a computation that is performed on one or more P collections, producing again one or more P collections. Usually it's assumed that all P transforms that require SDKs to be executed in the same uh, environment. So I mentioned environment. What's an environment? So in, in Beam's perspective, uh, an environment is somewhere where you can use to execute Beam UDFs. These are things like Beam do funds or combined funds. Environments are chosen by Beam runners and, and they are well-defined in the uh, uh, you know, standard Beam runner API definition I mentioned earlier. An environment usually consists of a URN which defines the type of the environment and a payload, which uh, defines parameters that uniquely identify the environment. An example can be a Docker environment. So it can be a Docker container that is you know, represented by this URN, which is well-defined and a payload where the payload is, is a proro that has one property, which is the container image for the Docker container. Um, yes, there are some limitations when it comes to uh, 
uh, runners and environments. For example, today data flow requires Docker environment. And while other, you know, some other runners might have uh, like Flink and work on different environments. Uh, a native process, uh, another type of environment would be something like a native process that can execute user code. This again, uh, you know, has uh, has a well-defined uh, URN and the payload is, you know, has the properties like the, you know, OS or the program command that you need to run to start this environment, right? Okay, so this uh, cues like a diagram of a very simple beam pipeline. Uh, so what we have here is an illustration of a pipeline that you know start with uh, beams create transform which can you know where you would give the data to start create a peak collection and uh, so if you look at this diagram and different colors so in yellow you find uh, the data and you know data would be in different forms in different stages of the pipeline and in blue and red i've given where certain p transforms will be executed so everything in red here uh, involves the runner. So runner would ex perform a part of the execution. And things in blue gets executed uh, in SDK environment. So in this example, we start with the create transform that generates a P collection, that gets stored somewhere. Then we have a paru that would get executed in a beam environment. And then we have a group by key that is usually executed by the runner. And then again, we have, a, uh, let me stop that. Okay. Uh, then we have, a, you know, combine fun that combines results. And finally, we have another part of you know, that, that would, uh, uh, you know, verify the results, right? So one thing to note here, it was that all the SDK steps was executed in a single, single environment. Now, when you take a beam multi-language pipeline, the difference is that transforms, uh, there can be more than one SDK uh, environment in the, in the same pipeline. So, uh, you know, transforms could get executed in more than one SDK environment. So why, why do you need this? Why do we need this? There are multiple reasons. One good reason is that SDKs can share IO connectors. Now, if you look at Beam today, we have Java, which has, you know, being around the longest, which has a lot of nice IO connectors. Python is newer. It, it doesn't have, you know, all the features that Java has yet. So one nice thing with multi-language pipelines would be that, you know, it, it will be possible for, Python to use some of the existing Java uh, connectors. And there are other uh, connectors and transforms like TFX that are only available in Python and Java will be able to uh, use such transforms. Right? We also have support for SQL, something called SQL transform that is only available, that is developed in Java and, and multi-language allows Python SDK or in the future go SDK to use this SQL transform. And um, also it's, it's with multi-language, it becomes relatively easier to uh, develop transforms because, you know, now instead of developing an implementation per SDK, you just have to develop one, right? you pick your favorite SDK and you go ahead and develop your transform using that SDK. And after that, you can just make that available to other SDKs. Um, also, it's easy to maintain code because again, you have to develop one version instead of developing multiple versions of the same transform for different languages, right? This is especially true for some characters version, which, are, which could be very complex. So it will be easier to maintain just one than you know, maintain multiple copies of uh, complex transforms. Now, again, the, the limitation I mentioned earlier goes away with multi-language. P transforms of the same pipeline may get executed in different SDK environments. 
Now the illustration again changes. This is one of the illustrations I showed earlier. Instead of one beam SDK, here in red, I've given the SDK that submits the job. We have multiple SDKs. And uh, so you'll always have one SDK from where you submit the job, but that SDK would connect to other SDKs to build the pipeline in this case. And it will create the standard definition of the pipeline, uh, pipeline again and submit it to the runner. Now runner again uses the fun API to connect to different execution environments, but now instead of one execution environment, it needs multiple because you have you know, parts that have to be executed in different places, right? So runner would start up multiple execution environments to actually execute this. Uh, uh, again, the, the mo a modified version of the other illustration where, you know, in green, I've given Java stuff and in blue, I've given Python stuff, right? So again, the same pipeline, but one of the steps get executed in a different environment. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, execution. So I would put the Beam pipeline execution into two different parts. So we have this job preparation stage and we have a job execution stage. So job preparation consists of constructing the job within the Beam SDK. Uh, so this is where we do things like expanding composites. So composites in Beam are transforms that are built using other transforms. And, and before we submit the job to the runner, we would span these comp uh, you know, composites down to primitives. And then we construct a job graph. So each SDK has its own you know, object definition of a graph and that would be constructed. And that graph would be you know, converted to a pro definition, the standard definition. And in, in job execution, we have everything that happened after submitting the job to runner. And one part, part of this is converting the you know, pro raw definition to a runner specific job request because each runner again has its own definition. So we have some definition and then we'll have to convert that to a runner specific request. And we would submit this to runner service. And usually there's a runner specific job setup for example, to provision resources needed to execute the pipeline. And the runner will most probably do some optimizations and will execute the steps, right? Now, which of these will be different when it comes to multi-language pipelines is the question. Now, I, in, in uh, bold here, I've given things that will be different. Other, th other things are pretty much the same. Um, so composites are expanded. Now, the issue is, with multi-language, some of the composites might not be defined locally, right? So we might have a Python pipeline that uses Java composite. So you need some trick to actually expand these composites that are defined in other, other SDKs. Um, now, after job submission, uh, we convert the you know, portable definition to the runner specific job request. Now, again, runner might, if, if we have multiple environments involved, the runner might you know, have certain modifications to, uh, you know, when uh, during the sub time of the job submission, it might define its own, uh, you know, pipeline differently. John, runner specific job setup can be different because now the runner has to provision multiple environments, not just one environment, right? And execution of steps could also be different because again, you know, you have to execute things in different environments, not just in one environment, right? So Rana has to take that into account. Now, I mentioned the first point here that, you know, we have to expand composites that are defined in other SDKs for multi language. So how do we do that? So first, let's look at what transform expansion is. So this is what happens when you, uh, like if you ever written a beam pipeline, when you call apply in Java, or if you use the pipe operation, in Python, that's when we expand composites. What this usually does is it adds to the object graph defined in that SDK. And uh, we, uh, so what we can do is, so what, when we, uh, you know, add to the object graph, we can separate these things out. They don't have to be done together, right? So it's possible to build parts of the graph separately 
and put them together into a single pipeline. And that's what we utilize for multi-language. Uh, and after expanding all the transforms and putting, putting them to, to, together, that's you know, uh, ready to be submitted to the runner. Now, to expand re remotely defined multi-language transforms, we utilize a service that's called an expansion service. This is specifically to expand composite defined in a given language. This, is, this usually can be accessed through a known URL and each transform have to have a unique URN as, uh, so that you know, this service can uniquely identify the, the transform that you want to expand. This service can construct and expand composites for that particular language. We have some tooling uh, in Beam, in Build, to uh, easily start uh, and use expansion services that are locally defined. So you can you know, quickly start up expansion service locally and expand your, your composites and attach those parts to the logic job graph. One thing to note is that you need at least one expansion service per remote SDK. So, you know, if say if you have a Python pipeline that is complex and uses Java parts and say Go parts, then you would need two, two expansion services to do that. Uh, this, this illustrates the operation of the expansion service. So uh, we have this external transform API that I'll, I'll get to in, in a little bit. That is what Python uses to refer to the uh, external transform. And it would generate an expansion request, an RPC, and would send that to the other side, to the Java expansion service. And Java expansion service would uh, you know, create a transform object and would call expand on it. And then you get the expanded transform object, and then Java would create a response, and the response would come back uh, you know, to the Python side, and Python will attach that to the uh, larger parallel and will be submitted to the runner. All right. So I, I think we are getting to the demo and code examples part. Does anybody have any questions before that? Okay, so let's continue. All right, so, so the example today is going to be pretty straightforward. So this is, uh, this is a Java transform that we are trying to use from a Python pipeline. It's called Java prefix. What it does is, you know, it takes, a, if you look at the expand method, it takes a P collection of strings as input and produce a P collection of strings as output. It has one constructor parameter, which is a prefix. What it does is it adds this prefix to every record. So that's done in this do fun, add prefix to fun, where we get the record and add the prefix to it and output it, that's it. And this is defined in Java. Okay, now assume you build this transform and you want to make this available to Python. What do you do? First thing you have to do is you have to add a builder to, to build this transform. Uh, the builder is given here in the bottom, it's called Java prefix builder. And you have to uh, implement this interface, external transform builder, which has just one method. Uh, and it takes one parameter, which is a configuration object that again, you have to define. This is a simple Java bean object. So I would define it in the top. It's called Java prefix configuration. This will basically have, you know, whatever parameter you need from Python side to construct the Java transform. Right. In this case, I just need one parameter, the prefix. 
that is the constructor parameter for the for the Java transform, right? So that's what I define in the configuration object. And then in the build method of the builder, build external method, I use that parameter to uh, instantiate my transform and I return my transform. That's it. And then you have to add the registrar. This is what helps you register your uh, transform, Java transform with the expansion service. This is again, very straightforward. We have to implement another interface and another class. Interface is called external transform registrar, which again has just one method. It returns a map that maps URNs to your uh, builder instances. So in this case, I defined a new URN for this transform and I return an instance of the builder, which I just defined in the previous line, right? And to make things easy, we use auto service, which is a Java tooling available that, that allows you to just you know, register certain interfaces with the service. So you just have to add this auto service annotation to the class and it, it, class loader will pick it up and it'll, it'll be made available to the expansion service. So that's all the code you have to add in the Java side to make it available to other SDKs. And then you have to decide on dependency, right? So uh, you have, uh, because you know, the runner has to execute this class. So you have to make you know, that class and other whatever dependencies you need available to the runner. So you have to decide what dependency you need. You need. So usually it's easier to just create a one shared jar, but it's, it's not required. You, might, you may use, multiple jars, that's fine too. What you have to do is you have to add these dependencies to the class path when starting the expansion service. So in, if you are starting Java expansion service, we would add uh, you know, these jars to the class path of that expansion service. Now, once you do that, Python SDK will make sure that it stage both Java and Python dependencies for the run. Next, you have to decide on the expansion service. This is usually pretty straightforward because you know almost always you would want to use the inbuilt expansion service, uh, which is given by this class, uh, you know, or Apache Beam SDK expansion service expansion service. Um, you you might, you could define your own expansion service. This is usually done when you know define a new SDK, uh, but usually the you know one we already have should be sufficient. This takes a single parameter, which is the part of the expansion service. And the, the address of this expansion service, hostname and port, should be specified to the Python pipeline when we're starting it, when you start it. And this is the Python pipeline. Um, now, this is just a regular Python pipeline, so I'll go through it. So we start with you know, refining a pipeline, and then we read the text file and create a input, which is a, a P collection of strings, which consists of lines from that text file. And then we invoke the Java transform, which is the one we defined, right? So to do this, you use this special interface called external transform. And to that, you pass as parameters, you need to pass three parameters. First one, the URN of the transform you want to use. The second parameter, the payload. Now this is the information that you need to actually instantiate your transform. Now in this case, there's, if you remember, there's just one constructor parameter, which is prefix, right? Now that's what we provide here. This goes as a, a pro. Uh, so to make building this payload easier, we, in Python, we have these a set of payload builders. Uh, so you don't have to go and manipulate proros. You can use our payload, one of the payload builders. So in this case, I use implicit schema payload builder, which, you know, where you just give the field names. Uh, and yeah, so that will make it easy to build the payload. And the third parameter would be the address of the expansion service. So it is, you know, host name and port. So what, 
the, as, a, as a prefix, I've given Java colon here. So, you know, to whatever the record, Java colon will be added as a prefix. Now, after we get the output from Java side, I added, added a Python pipeline, Python transform here, which also had, had a second prefix, right? Uh, so that's that's all in Python. So there's a beam map transform in Python where we add Python colon to the record we got from Java side. So end result should be Python colon, Java colon, record. And then finally, we write this output uh, to, a, to a text file. Okay. So let me try to run it. I hope you can see my shell, but let me know if you cannot for some reason. Okay, so I have three scripts here. I'll, I go through the contents of the scripts. So first I have a script to start the expansion service. So let's look at that. So, you know, I use Maven here to build my jar. So I go to my code, I package it. This would create a single bundle jar. And then I use Java jar command to start expansion service, that's it. So this jar I've defined so that my expansion service class it uses the main from my expansion service, All right? So, so just that's pretty straightforward. So let's start the expansion service. Okay, so ignore these errors just to come. Um, so it says, okay, starting expansion service at localhost 12345, right? Which is what I gave. Now it has some information here. It says, it, it found my transform, registering external transform, my beam transform job. So it was registered successfully and it's available to use. And this expansion service is running now. Now let's go to my other shell. Okay, so I, I'm going to run this using two runners. Direct runner and data flow runner. So let's look at the direct runner script first. Okay, so it goes to my Python directory. So I, since it's Python, I have to already be in a virtual environment. Um, now, if you want to learn about how to set up a virtual environment for Beam, it's uh, go to Beam Python Quick Start, and that should exactly tell you how to start a Python virtual environment for for Beam. Now what I do here is, well, first, if there's any output, I, I delete that output, and then I you know, run my Python pipeline, that's it. So as the parameters, I give the runner, the environment type, an input, and finally where I want my output, right? Let's run that. So it does things like you know downloading Docker images to start environments, etc. And it uses the latest game version. <clears throat> okay, so the pipeline ran successfully. Let's look at that output. Okay, so as you can see, there's a Python prefix, Java prefix, and the record. And the Input is that, right? So it, it, it added the Java part, it, it executed the Java transform and executed the Python transform. Now my other script is to run the same pipeline using Dataflow. Now this has more configurations because this is again running Google Cloud uh, and it does not have access to local files, again, because it's not in cloud. So I had to give my input in GCS, 
So I have given my GCS. In, uh, I, first, I delete my GCS output if it is over there. And then there's, there are some configurations that are needed for data flow, things like, you know, you need to give a project, you need to give a temp location, you need to give region, uh, job name is optional, but you can give it, and the number of workers, right? So this is the starting number of workers, data flow will perform auto scaling to decide exactly how many workers the pipeline needs. And then I run my pipeline and I have my input for you, which I use slightly larger for it, Tinglia TXT which is already available in, in cloud. And then output will be stored in this location. So as you can see, you know, it's this Python uploading jars, staging them for the Java environment here. Okay, so this could take some time. So let's go back to the rest of the presentation and we can come back because this has to upload stuff, provision, you know, VMs, etc. cetera. Uh, so what we could do is we could go back to the presentation, finish that and, and come back to see what to point here. Okay, well, I'm just waiting till the pipeline starts. Okay, so now we created the job and the pipeline is running. Right? So we have a job name here. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's it's running. And we can come back later to see what happened to it. All right, so I mentioned, uh, so if you are interested in this code and if you want to run it yourself, I committed it to GitHub. So you can, you know, just go to my GitHub, uh, Chamika MJ, and you will find the code. So you can try it yourself. Now, uh, I mentioned payload builders. So what these do is, uh, again, they help you build the payload uh, for the transform to be sent to the expansion service. This uses beam schemas to perform a, a type and field mapping. Now, what we do is we, we map these config params you set to the fields in the configuration object in the Java side, right? And um, there are several you know, payload builders. You can choose what you need. I used implicit schema payload builder, which just maps you know, field names directly to, to config object uh, instance variables. Um, and then there's a name tuple based payload builder where you can pass a name tuple from Python side. And then there's annotation based payload builder, et cetera. So you can you know, decide which payload builder you want to use. This is just to make, or you can build it you know, as a product. So it, it's just to make the life a little bit easier for you. Uh, now, now, if you look at this pipeline, uh, one issue here is that you know, it's, it works, but it's not, very user friendly, right? Because you have to use this specific transform name. Now, in practice, what we do is we usually wrap this with uh, another, uh, you know, Python transform and build a composite. This is just to make the API much nicer for users. Now, these wrappers can do additional things. For example, it can automatically start and shut down the expansion service. 
start the expansion service, expand and shut down the expansion service. Uh, also, it might already know the jars that you need, right? So for Ka we have Kafka uh, Kafka wrapper that knows that it needs the Kafka jar. So you know you don't have to specify it, specify that. It could just download it and, and stage it. Now, if you do all that and build a nice wrapper, from a pi pipeline others perspective, uh, an external transform would do just like a normal transform, just like a normal native Lulu transform, because you know it doesn't take any additional parameters. It just takes what you need to you that you expect to provide to a you know transform that does this particular function. Another thing to worry about is types. So, you know, we have we are trying to send data from Java side to Python side, right? So you have to communicate in, in formats that both sides understand. Uh, you don't have to, have to worry about what happens within Java, but when you want to take a peak collection out of Java and send it to Python, then it has to be a peak collection that both sides can understand. Now, these are the types that are represented by Beam standard coders. These are well-defined in Beam's run API parallel. I've given the, uh, some of the common types uh, that are supported like bytes, strings, KVs, you know, booleans, and in more complex types like iterables, timers, window values, et cetera. And we have also row. Uh, so row is what we would use for arbitrary structured types. Now row is a uh, you know a, a beam concept uh, where you can define arbitrary objects in a language neutral way, and it's supported by all major SDKs. So you can you know define a, a P collection of row in Java side and send it to Python, and you know use those bytes in, in Python side. Now. Uh, if, if your, your Java transform, if you already have a Java transform that produces some type that is Java specific, you might have to wrap it with the composite in Java side uh, so that you know you build a P collection of, of row. This is usually straightforward, but there might be a little bit of work if you already have a P collection that you want to available, you know, make available to Python side. Then, then you might need to you know, wrap it and you know, make it uh, build another composite that produces a P collection of row using the output of the other, you know, existing transform. All right. So that's the end of my presentation. Let's go back to this to see what happened. Okay. Showing this. All right. So the job is done. As you can see, you know, it, it ran all the steps and finished, shut down, auto scaling worked, etc. Look at the output. So I stored output here. So GCS Util is a tool that you can use to inspect GCS, which is uh, you know Google Cloud Storage. That is where we stored output. Okay, that's there. Let's look at that file. There you go. So, you know, input was getting clear and we added Python and Java prefixes to that. And if you go to uh, Google, uh, you know, uh, Cloud cloud uh, Pantheon page, Google Cloud uh, web, uh, sorry, Dataflow web page, you would be able to see your pipeline and see the, uh, you know, uh, job graph and, and metrics, et cetera. Okay, uh, does anybody have any questions? Um, we do have one question, it looks like, for any book recommendations for multi-language. Um, not yet, uh, I would, I mean, just learn. I think there are a couple of books about Beam, Beam streaming, et cetera. Uh, so that will be useful and for anybody using Beam. For multi-language, we have documentation. In, so if you go to Beam uh, 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 website and go to documentation, we have a section on multi-language. So that would be uh, the, the best thing to read if you want to learn more about multi-language. 
All right. Well, if there's no other questions, um, I just want to say thank you again, Sham, for your great presentation today. And just as a reminder for everyone, um, our feedback or your feedback is very important to us. And so if you would just take a few moments to fill out the survey that um, Alma listed in the chat, that would help us out a lot. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Cham, and thanks everyone for joining today.